This is a presentation on how to assess lung recruitability and perform recruitment maneuvers using the PV tool optional on Hamilton Medical Ventilators. The contents will consist of an introduction to lung recruitability, recruitment methods, and associated PV tool protocols in the form of a basic and advanced application. Let's begin with an introduction to lung recruitability and ventilator induced lung injury. An ARDS lung is characterized by lung collapse and consolidation, increased lung weight, lung heterogeneity, and a reduced size of the normal aerated lung. This is called the baby lung concept. The mechanisms of ventilator induced lung injury are resultant of three specific attributes. Stress or transpulmonary pressure is associated with the difference between alveolar and pleural pressure and is primarily responsible for the mechanical properties of the ARDS lung. Strain is associated with the repetitive opening and closing of alveoli, specifically at points of micromechanical heterogeneity. Atelect trauma is associated with collapse or consolidated lung comprised of a gasless compartment primarily responsible for the impairment of oxygenation. Left untreated, this phenomenon ultimately results in an alveolar inflammatory injury called biotrauma. The mechanical stimulus of ventilator-induced lung injury involves breathing frequency and dynamic features of the tidal cycle as well as the static elements of inflation such as plateau pressure, peep, and driving pressure. The energy load imposed by repeated tidal inflation, otherwise known as power, plays a central role in the injury process. The ergotrauma caused by ventilation power is conditioned by several forms of stress focusing that occur within the mechanically non-homogeneous injured lung. Therefore, by limiting plateau pressure, tidal volume, driving pressure, and applying an open lung strategy utilizing alveolar recruitment maneuvers and PEEP can minimize the total injury load applied to the lung. If we can recruit the collapsed lung and keep it aerated, the risk of ventilator-induced lung injuries decreases dramatically. Alveolar recruitment maneuver is used to re-aerate non-aerated alveoli and small airway collapse. The pressure to reopen fluid-filled or consolidated alveoli would be infinite with low probability of success. In early onset ARDS, patients typically do not have consolidated lung areas and can be fully recruited. This clinical case shows that if we perform a recruitment maneuver at high pressure, 55 centimeters of water in this example, and set PEEP, we can fully recruit the lung and keep it recruited in early onset ARDS patients. In this physiological study, 24 out of 26 early ARDS patients demonstrated that it is possible to fully recruit the lung, provided that we use pressure between 40 and 60 centimeters of water for the recruitment maneuver. Standard PEEP ranges do not recruit a significant amount of lung tissue because the pressures are below the opening pressure. To reopen a collapsed lung, we need pressures higher than those usually used during tidal inflation. Thus, increasing people overdistend the already aerated lung and will recruit a small amount due to the increase in pleural pressure. There is recruitment occurring at each tidal inflation that is called re-expansion. However, a collapsed lung can be recruited by using a transient increase in transpulmonary pressure, which is called a recruitment maneuver. PEEP is then used to avoid collapse and de-recruitment of a lung that has previously been expanded or recruited. The associated graph demonstrates lung recruitment as a function of airway pressure. This figure presents the grams of lung tissue on the y-axis, which regain inflation resultant of applied airway pressure on the x-axis, and mild ARDS represented on the green line, moderate ARDS represented by the blue line, severe ARDS with ECMO represented by the light red line, and severe ARDS without ECMO in the dark red line. These two studies in larger sample size measured the amount of potentially recruitable lung using the CT scan method in early onset ARDS on the right side and late onset ARDS patients on the left part of the screen. The amount of potentially recruitable lung is higher for early onset ARDS. Both studies showed a large variability between patients. Some patients have a very small amount of potentially recruitable lung, some have a very large amount. Hence, the recruitment strategy should be adapted to the amount of potentially recruitable lung. The question here, is every ARDS the same? No, not every ARDS is the same. As you can see in the slide, we have patients with pulmonary and extrapulmonary ARDS. Overall elastance of the respiratory system is more or less the same, but the response to an increase in PEEP is contrary. In addition, 
In extrapulmonary ARDS, we have softer lungs with an increase in chest wall elastance, whereas in pulmonary ARDS, we have stiffer lungs and a significant softer chest wall. Extrapulmonary lung shows the same contrary behavior as the overall elastance, indicating that patients with extrapulmonary ARDS tend to have a higher potential for recruitment. The main finding of the present study is a different response of respiratory mechanics in ARDS of pulmonary versus extrapulmonary origin and differentiation may be important. Lung recruitability is more important in severe ARDS than in moderate and mild ARDS. Lungs subject to extra respiratory injuries such as septic shock or pancreatitis have higher recruitment potential than lungs subject to respiratory injuries such as pneumonia. Now let us talk about the indications, the contraindications, and the different recruitment strategies. Indications for lung recruitment should be considered early in the management of moderate to severe ARDS as part of an open lung approach and in case of impairment of oxygenation after an intervention such as surgery, resuscitation, or similar. Contraindications for recruitment include lung emphysema, hemodynamic instability, high intracranial pressure, air leaks, right heart failure, and pregnancy. There have been several methods described for performing a recruitment maneuver. The most commonly used are the sustained inflation and pressure controlled methods. Size are a frequent increase in tidal volume or peak airway pressure, usually for only one breath, to re-aerate collapsed lung areas. However, there is no benefit over time and no tailored PEEP strategy to avoid recurrent collapse. Prone position is proven to be beneficial in ARDS patients to improve oxygenation. The rationale is complex, but one effect might be a re-aeration of previously collapsed lung tissue due to a change in gas distribution, fluid, and blood flow, coupled with a change in chest wall elastance. Staircase is another lung recruitment method. In pressure control modes with fixed driving pressure, PEEP is progressively increased from 10 to 45 centimeters of water in steps of 5 centimeters. The duration of each step is usually two minutes. After recruitment, a decremental PEEP trial is performed. This method is probably as efficient as sustained inflation, but is associated with more hemodynamic compromise at high levels of PEEP and is associated with complications due to the longer duration of higher intrathoracic pressures leading to low cardiac output. Sustained inflation is an increase in PEEP for a certain duration. Initially, 40 centimeters of water pressure for 40 seconds was used. The sudden increase of PEEP to 40 centimeters of water and the sudden decrease from PEEP of 40 centimeters of water has been associated with epithelium injury in the animal model of ARDS. The return to the same PEEP may cause the recruited lung volume to collapse again. With the PV Tool Pro option, you have the ability to quantify the effectiveness of the recruitment maneuver by measuring the volume increase at end inspiration. During the recruitment portion, the ventilator maintains a constant pressure of 40 centimeters of water for 10 seconds. If some recruitment occurs, the total volume of aerated lung increases. As a consequence, pressure at the proximal airway decreases. The ventilator then inflates using little spikes of flow to maintain airway pressure at 40 centimeters of water. If these spikes of flow are integrated and added, we get a volume, which is an assessment of the volume recruited during the recruitment maneuver if there is no leak from the circuit. In this study, a sustained inflation recruitment maneuver at a top pressure of 40 centimeters of water for 30 seconds was performed in 50 ARDS patients. Dynamics of recruitment were measured. Each line represents one patient. Some patients did not recruit. Some patients recruited from 50 to 800 milliliters. However, the dynamics of recruitment show that most of the recruitment occurs during the first 10 seconds of the recruitment maneuver. Conversely, the hemodynamic compromise starts at 10 seconds to be maximal at 30 seconds. These results support the use of a short 10 second pause during recruitment maneuvers. As an initial conclusion, we can say that blind recruitment without an assessment may be harmful for the patient. Therefore, we firstly need to assess the potential for recruitment. Steps for this approach are outlined in the basic and advanced protocol. These protocols are also available in electronic format. The gold standard for assessing recruitability is to perform a CT scan at two levels of PEEP and do some calculations. This is difficult to perform outside of research. Lung echography and electrical impedance tomography can potentially be used to assess recruitability. However, these methods are not employed outside of research. The easiest bedside method is to perform a low flow pressure volume curve. 
we will now discuss the utilization of the PV Tool Pro option. Most patients require deep sedation, with some patients requiring an additional neuromuscular blockade to prevent spontaneous breathing efforts. Monitoring the patient's hemodynamics during both maneuvers, the diagnostic and recruitment, is crucial. In the event of any hemodynamic impairment, stop the maneuver immediately. Ensure the ET tube cuff is inflated to a pressure higher than the maximum pressure specified in the PV tool settings. If used, the IntelliCuff pressure controller automatically adjusts the cuff pressure accordingly. Step 1 requires an assessment of lung recruitability. We recommend to start and end with zero peep to picture the whole PV loop. This gives us the opportunity to detect the necessary landmarks identifying the potential for successful recruitment. In the case of high potential for recruitment, we will recruit the lungs anyway. If there is a low potential for recruitment, we tend to set a low PEEP because these patients will not benefit from a high PEEP strategy. Once the diagnostic curve is generated, we will assess the shape of the inspiratory limb. In the first phase of the inflation limb, light green color, we are working only with the properties of the baby lung. Reaching the opening pressure, we are getting an improved pressure volume relationship because we are gaining volume due to alveolar recruitment. The example on the left shows us the typical shape of the inflation limb indicating high potential for recruitment. In contrast, the example to the right shows a more linear pressure volume relationship on the inflation limb. We are creating a typical pressure volume curve indicating low potential for recruitment where the deflation limb is similar to the inflation limb with a small hysteresis. Hysteresis is the volume increase under the PV curve. To further assess potential for recruitment, a measurement of the difference in volume between the inspiratory limb and the expiratory limb at 20 centimeters of water pressure is required. To view this difference, touch the PV tool graphics panel and select the pressure over volume plus pressure over delta volume or DV graph option. Following this, you will select cursor one and turn the PNT knob to the right until the cursors are set at 20 centimeters of water pressure on the X axis. From here, you can directly measure the difference in volume using the plot below the curve or the direct measurement on the right side of the screen. I will provide you examples in the subsequent slides. There is a strong correlation between the hysteresis, which is the whole area enclosed by the PV curve, and the difference between inflation and deflation volume at 20 centimeters of water. In patients with high potential for recruitment, the opening pressure on the inflation limb and closing pressure on the deflation limb vary significantly. This results in a significant volume gain enclosed by the generated PV curve. This area enclosed in the curve is called hysteresis and is a clear predictor for recruitability. If the shape of the inspiratory curve is convex and or the volume difference at a pressure of 20 centimeters of water is greater than 500 milliliters, the patient shows high potential for recruitment and a recruitment maneuver is warranted. If neither criteria is met, the patient has low recruitment potential. Consider maintaining the PEEP less than 10 centimeters of water, prone positioning, and if persistent hypoxemia is present, consider ECMO. After confirming patient has high lung recruitment potential, it is time to perform an alveolar recruitment maneuver. Before you start, evaluate the patient's oxygenation status. If the patient's SpO2 is above 92%, it can be difficult to evaluate the improvement in oxygenation after the recruitment maneuver. Consider decreasing FiO2 before the recruitment maneuver to reach an SpO2 value of 92%. If the patient shows indications of increased chest wall elastance, for example, morbid obesity or intra-abdominal hypertension, consider esophageal manometry to guide your recruitment strategy. Perform the maneuver by setting the P-start at the patient's current PEEP setting. A P top of 40, an N peep of 15, ramp speed of 5, and a T pause of 10 seconds. Comparing the most relevant papers regarding peep setting in ARDS, and also comparing different peep strategies, the average peep in the intervention group is around 15 centimeters of water. Paper studying post lung recruitment peep based on lower inflection point and decremental peep titration reveal that the average PEEP needed to sustain lung opening following lung recruitment is approximately 15 centimeters of water. To assess the effectiveness of the recruitment maneuver, a measurement of the volume increase at end inspiration during the 10 second pause is required. If the volume increase is greater than 2 milliliters per kilogram ideal body weight, 
or greater than 200 milliliters and the SpO2 is greater than 97% within five minutes after the maneuver, the maneuver is deemed to be effective. If those criteria were not met, proceed to the advanced protocol. It is important to assess whether recruitment maneuver was effective. SpO2 can be used with caution because it is dependent on cardiac output that may decrease during and directly after the recruitment maneuver. Gas exchange can be used. For example, an increase in PF ratio with a decrease in PCO2 for the same minute ventilation is in favor of recruitment. Compliance has a lot of pitfalls and should be used with caution to assess optimal recruitment. Lung imaging can also be used. Let's introduce the advanced protocol. Only use this protocol if the first recruitment maneuver was hemodynamically well tolerated. The advanced protocol begins with having to perform a second recruitment maneuver. Before you start, try to limit the patient's respiratory system driving pressure to a maximum of 15 centimeters of water after the recruitment maneuver. If the patient shows indications of increased chest wall elastance, for example, morbid obesity or intra-abdominal hypertension, consider esophageal manometry to guide your recruitment strategy. If the patient's SpO2 is above 92%, it can be difficult to evaluate the improvement in oxygenation after the recruitment maneuver. Consider decreasing FiO2 before the recruitment maneuver to reach an SpO2 value of 92%. Here we are using a higher P-top because more than 30% of ARDS patients need a higher recruitment pressure. We are choosing a high-end PEEP because the target is to perform a decremental PEEP titration after the recruitment maneuver to detect the optimal PEEP. Therefore, our assumption is that the lungs are successfully recruited and we are titrating the PEEP down to the point where the lung starts to collapse. If the volume increase is greater than 2 milliliters per kilogram ideal body weight or greater than 200 milliliters and the SpO2 is greater than 97% within 5 minutes after the maneuver, the maneuver is deemed to be effective. Perform decremental PEEP titration. If one criteria was not met, recruitment is not effective. Consider including esophageal manometry in your recruitment strategy. Consider decreasing FiO2 before the recruitment maneuver to reach an SpO2 value of 92%. If the patient's SpO2 is above 92%, it can be difficult to evaluate the improvement in oxygenation after the recruitment maneuver. Decrease PEEP by 2 centimeters of water every 3 minutes. Monitor SpO2 to determine the optimal PEEP value. As soon as oxygenation decreases with PEEP titration, specifically an SpO2 decrease by 2%, revert to the prior PEEP value, otherwise classified as the optimal PEEP. Repeat the recruitment maneuver with these settings. Now it is time to conclude. Recruitment should be an early goal in the management of ARDS. A tailored lung recruitment strategy decreases the risk of ventilator-induced lung injury in ARDS patients. PEEP does not recruit. PEEP avoids de-recruitment. Assessing recruitability is mandatory for making a rational decision about the recruitment strategy and setting of PEEP. The PV Tool Pro from Hamilton Medical applies the strategy in a safe and reproducible way. The PV Tool Pro is made to assess lung recruitability, recruit the lung, assess the volume increase after the recruitment maneuver, determine the optimal PEEP, and integrate esophageal manometry into your recruitment strategy. This concludes training on the PV Tool Pro function for Hamilton Medical Ventilators. Thank you for your attention.